practical themes accessible to young readers. Their new series, The Powers, is a tale of two remarkable sisters and the fantastical abilities that they wield. Here to tell you more about The Powers, Haven's Secret is Melissa and Jessica Benoist. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm gonna pull you back up on screen. <gasps> Here you are. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for being here. This is so cool. Thanks for having us. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Can you tell us how the idea for Haven Secret came to you and about the road to becoming published? Uh, well, it's been a long time coming. Um, I think uh, the fact that we were such bookworms as children and avid readers as uh, kids um, really, and Jessica has written forever. Um, I think that this idea came to us, what did you say, Jess, like seven years ago, which it, it's yeah. crazy that it's been that long. Um, but I think we, we both knew we wanted to put a book out there that resonated with young readers in the way that the books we loved uh, as kids did. Um, but we also wanted to put something out there that adults would love as well. Um, both of us, I still sometimes read YA and some middle grade too. Like I love Rick Reardon mm -hmm. and I loved like the Warrior Era series. I don't know if anyone's read those. Um, but yeah, uh, and then in terms of like this, the idea of the story, um, we're really both inspired by nature and that was a huge part of our growing up and adolescence with our grandparents and um, our family growing up in the Four Corners area of the United States. Um, and I think that was really important to us that we wanted to incorporate those kinds of themes. Uh, do you have anything to add, Jessica? No. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we both just wanted to make sure that uh, that we covered, you know, all of the things that we really liked about our favorite books when we were young and what still resonates with us as adults. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that like the landscape, the land and the nature, like Melissa said, the nature was like a really important part of the story. Um, and, you know, we obviously knew that we wanted to do something with, with, magic, like creating a magic system and a world where um, there's this magic that makes sense with what's going on. Mm. So in like a grounded way. I think mm -hmm. we just also wanted to like fill that Harry Potter void. Because <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job with that. I really feel that. Parker and Ellie, the sisters in the book, have a realistic, complicated relationship. Did your relationship with each other inform how you wrote theirs? I think that I, any sisters would would hopefully relate to their relationship. Uh, we've said that, you know, it's not like directly based on us as people. Like they're not carbon copies of us as characters and their sisterhood certainly isn't like indicative of exactly what our relationship is like or what our relationship with our younger sister is like as well. But I think um, our experience with sisterhood has definitely influenced um, Parker and Ellie's journey. Awesome. Great. All right, one sister in the book can communicate with animals and the other can harness the elements. Are you both animal and nature lovers at heart? Mm-hmm, yes, <laughs> very much, very much. We're actually right now like, um, we, I live in a really small town, uh, rural Kansas, and we are like looking at different types of animals and like my husband's doing all this research of all these different like livestock options that we could have. And I'm just like, can, or all of them, you know, can we just have <laughs> all of them? <laughs> That's what you, she texted our family group yes. the other day, like, oh, <laughs> My husband's researching, researching alpacas. alpacas, and I was like, I've, why? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have alpacas, and apparently some kind of, like, special sheep that has special <laughs> wool that's really good for bowstrings. Are you bowstrings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to learn how to, like, loom the... Oh, I'm going to have to... 
be I'm gonna have to do it for if we get those sheep because you have to do that stuff by hand or you ruin it. So uh-huh. I'm gonna have to figure out how I don't know what you do. That sounds like a lot know. of work. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's so much yes, better we, than just, we, like regular sewing <laughs> yeah truly cool um i'm boring and i just have two dogs but i would love i would love an alpaca but i don't want to like have to you you just come visit mine okay <laughs> <laughs> i want to I wanna see pictures on your twitter feed of the alpaca oh oh yes um, <laughs> Whenever I get my alpaca, I he'll have his own Instagram or she. They will have their own Instagram. Necessary. How do you get an alpaca? It's actually alpacas and llamas are pretty common, like uh, around this area. Like people in Kansas and Nebraska and like Missouri have them. So we would just kind of like a horse, I guess. You would just like call somebody that has them. That's say bring me this alpaca I love the dog in the book he's a really smart yes. dog named Arlo in the book who is just sounds absolutely adorable and I now I want a dog Arlo's the best he's my favorite character I think I partially have the dog that I have right now because of Arlo like <laughs> I was just reading you know we're go we're reading it reading it over and over again for all of our editing and stuff and I'm just like yeah I think I need a a cattle dog so now I have an us now I have an Australian shepherd <laughs> I wish my dog were like Arlo I do have a sort of Arlo-ish dog dog and my bigger dog drift but my dog my Jack Russell is way too stubborn and way too um evil sometimes <laughs> <laughs> right right before this actually uh my dog marty he came and tattled on the cat because the cat was on the countertop smelling the halloween cookies Uh-oh. so he is definitely like a little herding dog like he, That's great. everybody has to be well it is but he's bossy so and he tattles on everyone like you know, if we tell the kids, like, go hang out in your room and they come out of their room, he will, like, tell them he thinks it's he's his job. the boss. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> the world of the powers is similar to the world of Supergirl in that it's similar to our own, but magic exists. God, if that was only true. <laughs> Can you tell us the process of creating the world in the book and the sisters' magical abilities? Wow. I mean, the process... It had a couple iterations, um, and it's so hard, you know. I think in in any world building, when you're and obviously I'm I'm not approaching this as a writer, but um, the rules have to be so specific, and that was kind of challenging, you know, um, especially when we wanted this to feel grounded in real life and um, uh, in the world as we know it, uh, just with some magic sprinkled on there but Jess you could probably talk more to this than I I can no I think you hit the nail on the head like you want to be unique with it too you know it's there are a lot of fantasy books out there and there are a lot of different magic systems so you want to make sure that it's something that like really fits with with the setting and the characters and the story and um like you know we keep talking about we were really lucky because melissa from the very beginning was like something has to be with like talking to animals or communicating Mm -hmm. with animals or like hearing their thoughts and so we definitely had a very solid like with that and with also knowing that we really wanted nature and the physical landscape itself to be such a big like almost its own character like we had a really solid jumping off point um to parkers really inform that a, and flesh it out for sure yeah but parkers went through a bit of metamorphosis yeah yeah and one of the other things that we really wanted to incorporate um with parker uh, parker kind of showing signs of having like anxiety issues and i think that the final like what her powers really ended up being was almost like 
this manifestation of those feelings that you get when you have anxiety, like coming out of your body. And I think yeah. that was really cool because we knew we wanted to discuss that. Um, and she very clearly has um, these nervous, anxious feelings and issues um, controlling them and and letting them out. And so that she, you know, she finds this way to like let them out in a physical way mm. um you know I liked that I think that that's really when we were like yes this is yeah. what her powers need to be is the, these these manifestations of what that feels like yeah awesome Melissa, I just finished season five of Supergirl and I'm moving on to the last season <gasps> you're almost people. done I know I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> the ending Supergirl. How how does it feel ending it? I mean, uh, all kinds of feelings. Um, bittersweet, to to put it simply. Um, I'm I'm very happy to have some time to myself and and to be spending time with my family. But I really miss all my friends and um, everyone on the show, cast and crew. Everyone really became like a family. So it's really weird not seeing everyone every day. Um, mm. But uh, I'm really proud of what we did and how we finished the show. And um, gosh, there's only like three episodes left to air, which is crazy. Um, I hope everyone likes the last couple episodes. I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite memory on set? Uh, there are so many. Um, but the one that I always say that, that stands out there the favorite my favorite episode that we ever shot was um in season two it was Kevin Smith's first episode and um I've said this before but it's like remains my favorite moment and we were shooting in a quarry and it was what would have been like a really difficult day at work but with the good company that we had and Kevin was so wonderful and infectious and happy to be there and everyone was just like really having a great time. Um, it was like pouring rain on us and we were in the middle of this random rock quarry in the, the wilderness of Canada. And it was such a good time. Like I felt the way I used to feel when I did children's theater with Jessica growing up, like we were just having fun, um, which it didn't always feel like that. Cause you know, it was a job. So that was one of my favorite memories on set but there are so many to choose from um we had a lot of good times on that show i'm sure that's so awesome um do you both have upcoming projects that you can tell us about <laughs> i mean i am being a mom right now which i'm loving and um having the best time with my son and i just started a production company uh that's at warner brothers i've got to deal with them so i'm working on developing things and Hopefully in 2022, some of those things will um, start moving and turning and um, the gears are slowly grinding, but it's a, it's a really slow process getting a TV show made. So uh, everything I'm doing right now is a really long lead. <laughs> That's awesome. I guess, I guess I'm getting ready for al alpacas. <laughs> and I feel like that's a project in of itself. Na Navajo sheep. <laughs> and learning how to spin wool with my bare hands um actually <laughs> we are we are uh um i'm doing a lot of brainstorming outlining uh things up here uh for book two and um i have a, a trilogy that's missing a book three <laughs> in my uh in my adult comedies um so that's definitely what I'm going to be spending probably you know most of my time on just writing excellent writing and writing and <laughs> sheep sheep and alpacas well <laughs> you guys left us on quite an ending in this book yes I was reeling at this morning I was like oh my god I have to wait for a second <laughs> Do you, I know the audience is going to ask, do you know when we'll get the second one? No, no, no idea. Because you know what? This supply chain stuff is crazy. Right? Yeah. Like we're, I mean, I know most of you probably know we had to delay a week. 
I mean, we're lucky that it was only a week because it, it got mm-hmm. wor- like so much yeah. worse right after that. So um, we don't really have a timeline, I think, you know, but gosh, I would I don't want to say. Um, yeah, we'll be surprised. I don't know either. It's, we'll be surprised. I'm hoping yeah. it's next year, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I would I'm say stupid. I don't know if it's going to be like exactly a year, you know, um, but hopefully sometime in that in that window. Great. Not not two years, maybe, that. but not maybe exactly a year. Is that, is that enough? <laughs> what are you supposed to be reading right now? What are we reading, uh, reading, right, reading now? right now? If you're reading um, anything. Yes, I'm reading The Heartbreaking Work of a Staggering Genius because I've never read it. And I'm, it's, I'm, I like it, but I'm <laughs> slogging through it. It's not one that I've like really lost myself in. I should probably read something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm rereading a bunch of uh, Gregory Maguire. So right now I'm on Lost, and I was not expecting any of this at all. It's a very interesting story, um, and it, it's kind of a cool one. I won't like give too much of it away, but if anybody's read Gregory, like any Gregory Maguire, he is a massive, like very very deep. Uh, library of books that he's written and you can always find something uh, that fits your your mood or your tastes Mm -hmm. and um, this is a good one to read in that window between and around Halloween and Christmas it kind of encompasses like this very holiday-ish feel Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah it's his new book just got sent to me I can't wait to start really Yeah, this one's a little bit older. I'm finding I missed a bunch between like the second Wicked novel <laughs> he and keeps pushing them out. now. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize so, he had so many. Oh my God, he's yeah, got so many. So many. We've wow. posted him a couple times and he's always and so amazing. They're he all can in also the same sing. Universe? No, no. He, he can, can sing. Or not. He can sing like really well. He sang that a song on Wicked. Me. On our stage, it was excellent. Oh, I was like, "Why are you not song in the show?" Um, uh, the wizard and I. He sang like That's a little one of like, the hardest ones. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> That's cool. All right, yeah. I want to play a little game with you guys, and I want to make sure we have time for audience questions. So, you've written a book together, and you're sisters, but how well do you really know each other? So tonight. Here at an unlikely story, we're going to truly test these sisters. And audience, I'm going to need your help in the chat. So get your fingers ready. I'm going to pose some multiple choice questions to Melissa and Jessica about their sister. And I want everyone to write in the chat what answer you think is correct. And then we'll see how well these sisters know each other. All right, (laughs) Melissa, we'll start with you. What did Jessica dress up as for Halloween in the fifth grade? Yoda, Princess Leia, or Chewbacca? Princess Leia. Yes. Which Princess Leia was it? <laughs> I think it was in the fifth grade. You would have been. Yo. I don't know if I think you were older when you were Leia on Hoth. I think you were just Leia Organa. Yes. In the fifth grade. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hoth Leia, uh, I was like a sophomore in high school, and it's because there was a, an actual blizzard like yeah. three days before. And mom, you were working, you were in a show. Yeah. I don't remember which one. It might have been Sound of Music. It was Nuncrackers. Nuncrackers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but mom was like, You are taking Christina <laughs> trick or treating. And I was like, I, I like got home from school. It was like a Thursday or a Friday and I got home from school and I was like, I don't have a costume. And I threw it together out of like the warmest and white did your hair. clothes. Yeah. And then she did the this, crown. I don't braid. even know how she did it. I she just know. figured it out. There was no, Our mom well, is there an was amazing YouTube braider. back then, but we didn't know. 
you know, no, she you just do that next like, year and your alpaca can be Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh my so gosh, have you have get... a tauntaun. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. You will. I will. All right. This one's for Jessica. What is Melissa's favorite food? Anything sugary, cheese, or lamb meatballs? <laughs> uh, I I would have said dessert, so we'll just go with sugary. Yeah. <laughs> do you like lamb meatballs? Is that a thing that you've had? I do, but not, I mean, not <laughs> like intensely. <laughs> 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 no, I have a problem with sugar. I definitely do. This is a good time of year for that. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa. It's a dangerous time of year. Go on. What did Sorry. Jessica want to be when she grew up? An author, a professional basketball player, or a sports reporter? <laughs> uh, an author. But you, for a second there, you wanted to be a sports reporter. <laughs> Not like on TV, but you were like in journalism. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I yes, sports report. I wanted to be a journalist, yeah. a sports journalist. Yes, yeah. Um, and that's what I went to school for. And then I was like told by many people, um, if you really like sports, this Don't will ruin do it. it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> and too. then I ended up like then I stopped watching sports anyway. But <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, I don't DJing in um. I did DJing in college and I had to like uh -huh. cover the game past a basketball game oh. and I know nothing about basketball. That's amazing. <laughs> I was like, he shoots, he scores, and I just kept saying it. And I was like, yeah, he shoots, he that running I mean that side of the court. <laughs> yeah, that's really all you need to know. He's either shooting and scoring or he's shooting and he's missing. And yeah, if it's baseball, you just it. go swing and a miss. <laughs> <laughs> and it's out of here. <laughs> Jessica, who would Melissa yes. consider to be the better cook? Or are you both good cooks? Okay, I think, <laughs> see, I said it was me. I think she thinks it's her. That's what I say. <laughs> what do you she think, thinks, guys, in the chat? I, I think she how would I consider, I think she would consider herself a better cook. I think we're both good cooks. I think That's we are. This question I is agree. hard because we both really yeah. enjoy cooking and we yes. have similar styles. Like I, I feel like I we, so. we both like to cook really healthy and mm -hmm. I like cooking really rustic, like hearty, healthy meals. And um, I don't know. This is a hard question. <laughs> I There's like no the easy answer. Both can cook. I like that. Let's go. We <laughs> both can cook. Anyone can a really cook. Great yeah. bowl of cereal. <laughs> 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 Melissa, according to Jessica, who is Parker and who is Ellie in real life? Is uh, Melissa Parker? Is Jessica Parker? Or is neither? Jess is Parker and I am Ellie. Do you agree, Jessica? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting, too, because like, I, there were these very loose associations, like, you know, we didn't specifically frame either of them after one of us, after no. either of us, you know, but it was kind of like, we'd put these little things in, like, that we wanted seen reflected in either one of them, you know, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> And they they just ended up being like the things I wanted to see kind of ended up in Parker and the things that Melissa yeah. really wanted to see kind of ended just it just ended up that way, not on purpose. But then as we were doing the audiobook narration, I was like, Parker, Parker's, let's just say Parker's brattiest outbursts came <laughs> way too naturally to me. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> So, Parker, like, just, yeah, it was, <laughs> I had a blast, and then I can't, then I, like, I wrecked my voice on the first day just being bratty Parker, like, Parker. <laughs> like my voice it's hurts, opinion. my husband's, yeah, she's vocal, she has things to say, she's not going to keep it in, and that was definitely me as a kid, so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had a lot of fun, too much fun, I wrecked my voice the first day so then I couldn't talk at all the day in between 
and you need to do that yeah just yeah <laughs> and my husband's like what was so hard I was like the child is angry okay <laughs> I had to I had to be angry Parker. You gotta, you gotta give it all the emotion. I know. <laughs> of the two of you, who is the sillier sister? Who's this question for? Both of us? Um, for both of you. I think Melissa's definitely sillier for sure. You could say silly or you could say strange. <laughs> that, yes, that odd eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was definitely the sillier at, when we were kids mm -hmm. like hyper crazy silly yes yeah like a muppet yeah i'm still like a muppet. started a hashtag yes, yes. in the chat hashtag melly benoist that's <laughs> that's great <laughs> all right melissa what would Jessica consider the best gift she's ever received? A bedroom set or the Star Wars collection on VHS? Oh. Oh. <laughs> the Star Wars collection, I think. <laughs> it's not what I know, but I forgot about that. Be what bedroom collection? Which one? The bedroom set. You don't remember the bedroom set? I had that thing until like, oh. Like until eight years ago, the I had that thing forever. One? Yes, the oh. Scandinavian <laughs> designs, and it was like my birthday is really close to Christmas. It's like uh two, about two weeks and a few days from Christmas, and so every once like as I got older and I was like playing with toys less, my mom would always be like, "Would you like a larger item and have it be combined like Christmas and um, birthday?" And like, I remember I was wanting a bigger bed and we got really into, um, we watched what was the name of that spaces. show? Trading Spaces. We got really into interior design. And uh -huh. so I wanted to like redo my bedroom. And so my mom was like, would you like a brand new bedroom set for uh, your birthday and Christmas combined? And I was like, yeah. And so and it wasn't <laughs> Ikea. It was like. It was no, a big was... deal to all of us that it was Scandinavian, Scandinavian furniture, design. but I don't even yeah. think Ikea was in the States at that point. Probably not. This was no. like a Late handful 90s. of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was cool. It was, I enjoyed it. It was very memorable, I, I guess. It's so practical. <laughs> It's so as I was writing as, as I was like answering this question, I was like, this is the most boring practical thing ever, but it like made an impression on me. I love furniture. I still That's love shopping so for furniture. So do I. I was like 14. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I furniture shopping is so exhilarating. It, yes. I love furniture shopping. I do too. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> this is what adulting is, guys. <laughs> I would say like, and we talked about it on Tuesday too, like computer games and video games, always big, big, big deal. In our house, big yeah, deal. big deal. I did get, I did get, um, this is going to age me and uh, out me as a big, big nerd. But I remember that I got like Metal Gear Solid 2 early. It came out like, the last week in November, and that was an early Christmas present, and I that was a big deal for me. <laughs> yeah, you and you played the crap out of those games. I was never good yeah. at that game. I can't play like a. I don't know if I was good at it. Stealth but... game like that. <laughs> you lost me at the video games. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. That's so cool. All right, we have so many audience questions, <laughs> um, and some of them are really funny. So we're gonna say like Jess is Jess is the gamer. We're both gamers. Um, yes. and there are certain games that she's really good at that I cannot do. Um, but look at yeah, see, look. She's Obviously, you guys get to see my gaming, my gaming rig today. And by rig, <laughs> I mean chair. I have a Legend <laughs> of Zelda poster like right behind me in the corner. That's I'm pretty my sure my I like my son game. has that exact same poster. <laughs> <laughs> he Boyfriend loves obsessed. Zelda. <laughs> I got him um, the master sword, like an actual sword for Christmas. Oh. 
Etsy. And it was like a whole thing. <laughs> and the box <laughs> that came in was ridiculous. And my mom was like, why is this here? Why did you ship it to my house? I was like, I need to hide it. <laughs> All right. This question is from Millie. How is the experience of recording the audiobook? Very fun, but difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tough. You don't expect it to be hard. And then because you're they're like, okay, we're going to do six hours of work over the course of a couple. Every day you do six hours of reading. That is a lot to read out loud. And you have to like lubricate your voice because after a while you start getting all like your mouth and your throat do things that you're like, I don't know what's happening. And it's difficult, but I had a lot of fun. And it's fun to like create the voices of the characters and um, that I, it, it, that is the best part. Yeah, your brain just, it, it's mentally exhausting. Yeah. Like I came home and I like couldn't think. And towards the end, I was like, <laughs> It's like reading certain words that should not be pronounced phonetically, <laughs> phonetically, and saying just a week, like I tried to say cupboard instead of cupboard, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Like your brain's just like, this has been too many words for us, and you're not going to speak normally anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, it's fun, and I I can't wait to do it again. I, it was yeah. really, really, really fun. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, this is a really fun question. In the book, Parker mentions that the twins like anything with fake cheese, anything spicy, anything with real cheese, and anything with matcha. Extra lemon in their fuzzy water and extra extra fudge sauce on their sundays. How can you both relate to that? <laughs> in every way. <laughs> we're both we're just a foodie family. We love food. We love eating. I mean, every, who doesn't? But um, cheese is a big deal for our family. Chocolate's a big deal for me. Um, I, like I think I have food. about eight different types of cheese in my fridge right now. <laughs> and that is the main source of my daily calories. So <laughs> yep. it's just like, oh, what am I going to eat? Oh, some kind of cheese. We're just a big cheese. charcuterie board family to every holiday, like massive charcuterie with all the cheeses and accoutrement. Sundays were a big thing for like we ate a lot of ice cream I as still kids do. too. And I was just talking to a friend of ours that we did theater with, and we were talking about this old this dinner theater that we used to do uh, children's theater. And we were like, we had a 10 minute long conversation about the turtle the dessert, Sunday. the dessert options and the turtle Sundays, yes. And they and we were like they really like gave a ridiculous amount of ice cream and, and syrup on those things, knowing That's that they're they like were so children. Good. They're like children in this the audience because they came and gave them at intermission. So they're like sugaring these children up at 845 at night and then expecting them to sit still for the second act. <laughs> like, of a show. Yeah. <laughs> I live know. for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were well behaved, but there definitely weren't kids that were like going to handle, you know, a three, like three cups of sugary ice Fiddler. cream and then sit through act two of Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to have ice cream like DoorDash to my apartment now. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. All right. This one is from Carol from Brazil. How would you rather talk to animals like Ellie or produce heat energy like Parker? I would want to talk to animals like Ellie, hands down. Yeah, I I just like, I'm just so enthralled with the idea of like uh, elemental magic. Um, it's probably because I, I've just played like a ton of World of Warcraft and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like that whole like druid shaman like controlling the elements and making thunderstorms and stuff like that. I just love that. I think that would, that's amazing. Awesome. They do have like the coolest powers in this book. All right. Even though Jessica has been a writer since forever, her main style is comedy and Melissa has been an actress. So assuming this is a new experience for both of you, how is it to jump in this adventure with your own sister? 
I mean, for me, yes, coming from the entertainment industry and what I've been, the hats that I've been wearing in that world, I, I thought, I was like, oh, publishing can't be that different. It is an, an entirely different ball game. And so I felt like I was really eating the meal as I cooked it, <laughs> so to speak, like learning as I, I went and still don't really know the business that well. And so for me, it was like learning an entirely new skill. Um, and I am not the writer that Jessica is. So it was, a, it was all new for me. Um, but, you know, I love learning new things and expanding my horizons and, and perspectives. So it was all good. Yeah, and and I think how is it to jump in with with my sister? I can't imagine like any one better. Um, yeah. I think we both know each other so well. We know our our voices and our styles and our interests and what we were looking for in this book. So it was like. I do think it would have been a lot harder if I had done this with someone else. Like, yeah, I think that definitely it had to be the two of us together to do this type of thing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, it's always, it was different for me too. I've never worked with a publisher and yeah, this is like polar opposite uh, from what I normally write and how I normally write. And so I was pretty nervous, like, you know, to, be in this different process than I'm used to and to be in this completely different genre than I'm used to. And uh, I think it was really helpful that we just both, um, you know, had such a solid idea and had each other's backs in all of these processes. So it was great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This one is from Anne Katrin. Do you plan slash hope on adapting the book series to an animated or real life film or TV series? I hope so. Yeah. Um, of course. I mean, like I was saying earlier, it's really hard to get a TV show made at all. So fingers crossed. But yeah, I think it would, this world would be really fun to see uh, live action. I would love to see Haven House. Like, yes. Oh, the yeah. House so cool. itself oh, yeah. is just like a huge playground. So <laughs> here's the whole thing. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the dream. Anytime you write a book, um, or oh, I won't speak for like every author, I, but I think anytime you write something that's this like visual and you really have this like strong, uh, vision in your head of what things look like, like, like Haven House and like the characters and, mm -hmm. and uh, the landscape is, is so uh, well defined in your, in your brain, like you definitely want to see that in an actual, you know, visual interpretation for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, this one is from Gracie. I was wondering what y'all's favorite part of the writing process was, and if you had any other powers in mind before you decided on sensing what other living things are and feelings and connected gifts. Um, I mean, my favorite part of the process was actually just kind of laying the groundwork for us to the, the initial brainstorming, uh, you know, just coming up with these characters um, and really like delving into what we wanted their powers to look like. And then, and then really, I think I should tie that in with my, my favorite also being seeing the end product and seeing how much it has grown and reading the final manuscript. And just that feeling was, um, really satisfying. Okay. Well, what was the second part of the question? <laughs> I was like, and now I should answer the second part and I can't no, remember. Fine. <laughs> I think you answered it. That First was of all, shout out to the y'alls. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Two Texas girls right here. You get that y'alls in there. Yes. Um, this is going to, nobody's really asked us this. Um, I'm going to say what, what my favorite part of writing is anything whether it's i mean some of you have read the book and i think you'll agree there, there's there's 
there's some humor in this book. That's there's I I always like going back, and this is more important when I'm writing like actual comedy and humor. Um, but it was important in this, and I just love anything in life. My favorite thing is going back and doing the punch up. You go and find, like, make sure that you're finding anything that can be funny or, mm -hmm. you know, just make people smile or laugh. That's that's always uh, really fun for me. Um, and, and I think definitely my favorite part in this particular book was, like Melissa said, just like the sharing of ideas. Like, it's very yeah. exhilarating to to be in a phone call or a Zoom or whatever and just be like, oh, this, this, and oh, they could do this, and oh, it could be here, and like, it's yep. just a blast. It's so much fun, you know? It feels like being a little kid again and yeah, playing make-believe, but you're gonna make a book out of it. Like, it's fun, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> All right, this question's from Olivia. What was the hardest part of writing a book together? Um, <clears throat> I think that was the hardest part is like having too many ideas. Yeah. Really just so many different ways we could take this. Um, so many different ideas and things we wanted to see. And, you know, the good thing is we didn't have to fit it all into one book. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that, that, that I'd say it's, is, was a good problem. Just too too many ideas, too many things we wanted to put in. Mm -hmm. um, so really weeding out what had to go in and what could and be to the dealt with later. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love sure. this next question. This one's from Grace. I know that both Melissa and Jessica were big Harry Potter fans growing up. And I was wondering which house you think you'd be placed in. Ravenclaw. Slytherin. I've taken, I've done my Pottermore, guys. I know it all. I'm a Ravenclaw <laughs> and my Patronus is a tabby cat, which doesn't really make sense for me, but that's what I got. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've done the Patronus test, so I don't remember that one, but I am definitely a Slytherin. I did not used to be. Um, I used to be <laughs> Ravenclaw, always Ravenclaw. When the books were like out, when you did your Potter, when Pottermore first started, I was always Ravenclaw. I took it again about five years ago when my son started reading the books and I've taken a whole bunch and I always get Slytherin. And That's I'm so guessing funny, but... that my Patronus would be an alpaca. No, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> it, it would be a reptile. I'm very weirdly, like, really, really think that, like, crocodiles and snakes and lizards, is, they're adorable to me. I love it. And this so, it, so <laughs> this plays into <laughs> the Slytherin thing because there are some quizzes the where they have? ask you about snakes. And I'm like, yes, I love snakes. And so then they're like, you're a Slytherin. <laughs> well, of course I they know. do. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't know. I think oh, I think like a crocodile Patronus would be amazing. I don't remember anyone in the book having a I don't Patronus like a that was a reptile. I can't remember. It's because can't people don't think that they're cute. That's why. We also never really <laughs> saw Slytherin's Patronuses. No, True. we didn't. Maybe. Maybe. All right. I have hmm. one more question for you guys. Tomorrow is Halloween. Are you doing anything fun? And do you have any family traditions? Um, my fa Our family traditions was just gorging on candy for me. Um, even when I was way too old to trick or treat. I loved trick or treating. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm not doing anything really. We'll see if we get any trick or treaters. Um, there's like a little neighborhood walk. My son is really, really little, so he'll probably last like 15 minutes at his costume if that. What's um, his costume? He's being an old fashioned aviator. No. He's got like a pilot's outfit and uh, goggles and the whole thing. Oh gosh, that's adorable. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> um,. We're just staying home. I mean, we might go trick or treat like very minimally um, with my six year old. But yeah, mostly just eating candy. Uh, we like to do cookies. I um, am obsessed with 
whatever holiday or season it is, like decorating cookies. And I have like <laughs> that's a big too, tradition for our family. Way too many cookie cutters, way too many different kinds of sprinkles. And it's like that's what we do. So I think we're probably doing that tomorrow. And we just watch a lot of movies. So we've been kind of working through the list. Um tonight I'm watching um army of darkness with my older son <laughs> and uh not a family friendly movie <laughs> but then we will probably watch some family friendly like I, I, we've watched a lot of them i don't know what we're down to like mm. ghostbusters and, and maybe some harry potter Chris made me watch The Conjuring last night, and I'd never nope. seen it, and I don't do well. See, I, I don't like do watching scary movies, but I don't do well watching them, so I'll, like, I need, like, a massive bowl of popcorn, and when I'm too scared, I'll just, like, really inspect every <laughs> piece of popcorn that I want so that I don't have to watch when the jumpy parts happen. <laughs> and, and I got scared, and I told him I wasn't going to be able to sleep, and then... I woke up like four times in the middle of the night last night at the witching hour. That's just what happens. I'm seeing the new Candyman movie tonight. And I'm terrified because I saw that movie when I was way too young and I slept with the lights Ooh. on for three months. My oh, mom's no. mad. She's like, who let you watch this? So I'm like, like, <laughs> like prepared for the worst tonight. Sleeping One of my best Halloween memories was when I went over to a friend's house once on Halloween, we were like 12, 13, and everyone wanted to watch Friday the 13th. And instead, I went into the other room with another friend of mine, and we put on Spice World. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you both so, so much. This book was so fun to read. It was such a treat to read before Halloween. If you live in the U.S. and you want additional copies of the book, click the green button below. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. You're going to get your book soon. And everyone have a safe and happy Halloween. And Melissa, Jessica, thank you both so much for doing this event with us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, actually, before we log off, I know some people asked in the beginning if we could take a screenshot. So oh, yes. we all smile. You guys are ready to take a screenshot in three... <laughs> Two, one. Okay. <laughs> I had to do my glamour, my glamour shot. <laughs> then, like one shoulder goes forward. There you go. <laughs> Thank my you so much, everyone. This was so fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.